Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, we're going to learn the basics of SQL. So, let's get this started. Alright, so before going further, let me clarify a few things. You might have heard the terms SQL and MySQL. So what do you think is the difference between these two terms? The main difference between these two is the fact that SQL is a programming language, whereas MySQL is a relational database management system where we use the SQL language to execute queries. Queries are just commands or instructions that we execute to do some operations onto the database. So MySQL contains all the databases that we want. So anything that you want to do inside of that, like creating a database or creating a table or inserting and retrieving of data, all of that can be done using the SQL language. So that's the main difference between these two. All right, so now let's see how to do it. So there's many ways of doing this. One way is to actually download the MySQL software onto your system, which installs the command line and the workbench through which you can execute the queries. Or the second way is to use XAMPP or VAMP or MAMP or any of the software bundles that we get, which includes MySQL in it. So you can download that. And for this video, we're going to use XAMPP, which contains Apache and MySQL pre-installed with it. So I'm going to open my XAMPP and this is the control panel. And I'm going to start my Apache server as well as MySQL. So now that both of them are started, you can close that off and go to the browser and type in localhost slash phpMyAdmin. So this is the interface of phpMyAdmin and phpMyAdmin is nothing but a simple UI interface which is there to interact with the database management system that is MySQL and PHP is more like the interface itself. Okay. So there's actually two ways of doing some operations like executing queries in this. The first way is to use the visual interface itself. And the second way is to use the SQL terminal. And for this video, we're going to use the SQL terminal as you need to know the SQL commands so that you'll be able to execute them easily. And after you're done with that and after you're done perfecting it, then you can jump into the visual interface, which simplifies things for you. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay, so on the left hand side, you have all the databases and you can click on new to create a new database if you want. So I'm going to close this off since we are not going to use that. So in this, we are going to go to the SQL tab and this is the tab or the terminal where you execute queries. So you write your queries here and click on go and that is going to be executed. All right, so first things first, let's first create a database onto which we are going to do the operations. So the syntax for creating a database is something like this. So the query is create database and the database name. So as you can observe, the query itself is similar to an English sentence, except for the fact that some of the key elements are missing here. But other than that, it looks similar to an English sentence and it's pretty easy to understand. So all of the queries inside of SQL are something like this. So you have to do only one thing that is you have to memorize these queries. So you have to know the syntax for all the queries that you want to execute. And most of them are pretty easy to understand when you look at them. So it's not that difficult to memorize them. So this is the query for creating a database. And now if you click on go, that is going to create a database. So if you go to the database section, you can see that there's a database here called as packet code. So now if you click on packet code, that is going to open the database itself. And inside of this, you have to execute the queries to create something inside the database. Okay. So now if you go to the terminal, that is the SQL, as you can see here, all the queries that you're seeing right now will be executed on the database packet code. Previously, you had the root directory here, but now you have the packet code. That means you're inside the packet code database and inside of that, you're inside the terminal. Okay. So there are four main queries that you need to know. Those are the CRUD operations that is create, read, update, and delete. These are the four main things that you do for any database that you create. Those are the main operations that you do for a login system. You create a user, you update the user, you delete the user. Or something like that right so all of those are linked to these four operations other than that there are other operations as well we'll get into that later but for now you need to know these four operations so the first one is create so we are going to create a table first okay so the syntax for creating a table is something like this so let's assume that we are creating a table to manage all the login details so it's going to be something like create table and the table name Okay, similar to how we created the database here as well, you're going to type in create table table name. Okay. And the table name is going to be login. So when you think of a table, the first thing that comes to mind is that you have to have columns and rows. So in SQL, the columns define the types of data and the rows define the user information. 
okay so let's say you have a login table then that you have username password and email address right so the columns define the username password and email and the rows define all the values for each and every user so when you create a table you have to specify the columns that you want to create as well so beside the login i'm going to create brackets and type in the names of the columns so the first column is going to be username and after typing the name of the column you have to give the data type so since username is a string type you're going to type in varchar which is an alternative to string in sql and instead of this you can specify the limit of characters that it can accept so i'm going to give it as 255 that is the limit for this character and the next thing that i'm going to create is a password so for the password i'm going to give the data type as long text and long text is another variation of the string data type it's pretty large compared to varchar so you're going to use that when you have to have a larger content so the next thing that i'm going to create is email and the data type for this is going to be varchar as well so there are multiple data types inside of sql you can just do a quick google search and you'll get all the data types that are available for sql varchar and int is the most commonly used data type other than that you have float and boolean all of that similar to all the other programming languages so one thing that you have to remember is that after each column name that is the line you have to give a comma and for the last thing you don't have to give anything that means it's the end part so apart from this we are going to create another column and we're going to name it as id and give the data type for that as int and the limit for this is going to be 11 characters so the reason why i'm creating this is that when you insert a row inside the database all of them stack one below the other and when you're trying to access a particular row you have to have a particular value or a unique value identifying that particular row right so to identify that particular row we're going to have an id associated with all of these so to make it so that the values inside this id column are unique you're going to use a keyword called as primary key so this primary key defines that this id column is unique and this is what is being used to uniquely identify each and every row inside this login table okay that's the property that is being defined by primary key apart from this you can give another value called as not null that defines that all the columns inside this login table can be null but this id cannot be null so if you copy and paste this not null value for this username as well then it implies that both of these should not be null all the other remaining can be null okay so when you're trying to insert a record inside this table you have to make sure that id is not null and the last property that we're going to give is called as auto increment so this is going to automatically increment the value for us that means when you're trying to insert a new record you don't have to give the id out automatically it is being taken and it is being incremented you just have to give the values for username password and email okay so now this is the structure for creating a table so now if you click on go that is going to create the table and now if you go to the structure you'll have the login table right so inside the login table you're going to have four columns id username password and email so now inside the table if you go to the structure you can see that id has a primary key value to it and it has auto increment and the default it should not be null so for username as well we have all the other properties so now that we are done with creating the table the next thing that we have to do is read the table but before reading the table we should have some data inside the table right so we're going to first insert some records into this table so I'm going to go back to the SQL and in the terminal, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to type in the insert query and the syntax for that is something like this. So this is the syntax for inserting a row inside the table. So it's going to be insert into login and the values that you want to insert are username password and email because id is automatically being incremented so you don't need to insert it so you are going to insert username password and email and the values for these three columns are kamal the password is admin and the email is packet code official 
So these are the values that you're going to insert. So remember that for the database, you used create database database name and for table create table table name. But here you're going to type in insert into login, right? So you have to remember this. So now if you click on go, that is going to execute that. And if you go to the browse, you're going to have a record with ID of one. Similarly, if you want to insert multiple records into the table, the syntax for that is something like this. So the syntax is similar to the previous one except after the values first one we're going to have another value and it's going to have the data that you want to insert. So now if you click on go that is going to execute it and if you go to the browse section you're going to have two more records with the data and the id is being given as two and three. So it's automatically being incremented. So now that we have the data let's now see how to read the data. So that is to retrieve the data right. So I'm going to go back to the SQL. And I'm going to type in the query and the query is something like this. So the query is select star from login. That means you're selecting everything. So the star or asterisk means everything from the login table. So now if you click on go, so that is going to return us all the data present inside the login table. So now let's say you don't want all the data. You just want a particular column. Let's say username. So now instead of giving it as star if you give it as username and click on go that is going to give you only the particular column that is username similarly you can get a particular row as well so instead of let's say uh, okay let's leave it as it is for this and at the end i'm going to type in where and give the id as equal to one so that means you're selecting the username column from the login table where the id is equal to one so now if you click on go, so you're going to get the username from the first row. So similarly, you can just remove this and give it as asterisk. That is going to retrieve all the data present inside the first row. Similarly, as you have given it as equal to, you can give it as greater than or less than or not equal to all of that operations. Okay. So now if you click on go, that is going to retrieve the second and third record inside the table. So now that you're able to create a record and insert the record and also retrieve the record. The next thing that you want to do is you want to update the record. Like let's say you have some mistakes that you want to change. Like let's say the user tries to change his password to your new password. Then you have to have an update function or an update query. So the query for updating data inside the table is something like this. So it's going to be update login and set the password equal to OK, where ID is equal to one. That means you're selecting the first row and setting the password as equal to OK. So you can keep this in one line, but I'm going to shift this to three lines to make it more readable. So this is the query. So even though it's showing red line, if you execute it, it's going to get executed. So now if you see here, the password has been updated to OK. Similarly, you can update multiple data as well. So instead of just updating password, you can update username as well as password and even email as well. Okay, so the query is similar, you just have to give the other properties as well. So now you're changing the username as well as email. So now if you click on go and go back to the browse section, as you can see here, username and email both have been updated. So the last main query is to delete the items. So let's say you want to delete a particular row from the table. The query for that is something like this. So it's delete from login where the ID is equal to three. So that is going to delete the third row. So now if you click on go, and it's asking whether you want to do it or not. I'm going to click on OK to confirm it. And if you go back to the browse section, as you can see here, we only have two records. That is the third record has been deleted. So you cannot delete a particular value. You can just update it, but you can delete the whole row if you want. Okay. You can even delete a whole column as well. We're going to get to that later. But for now, this is how we delete a particular row. 
So one thing that you have to keep in mind is that let's say for this table we deleted the third row. So now if you insert another row, what's going to happen is that the ID for that new row is going to be 4 and not 3. Okay, so that is because we gave it as auto increment, it's going to remember that it had created three rows in the previous insert query. So now it's going to insert it with an ID of 4. So if you don't want that to happen, you have to manually change the ID or you have to manually add the ID when you're inserting the row. So these are the four main operations that you generally do inside the table. So other than this, you have some more queries that you need to know. And the next thing that we're going to see is how we can delete all the data from the table and not touch the columns. That is, you're just going to delete the rows and leave the columns as it is. Okay, so the syntax for that is something like this. So it's saying truncate table table name. So truncate is a keyword that you use to generally delete the data and you're going to delete that from the table which is named as login. So now if you execute this and it's going to ask whether you want to do it. So I'm going to confirm it. So as you can see, we don't have the data inside the table. We just have the columns right now. And the main thing about this is that if you try to insert a new row right now, what happens is that it's going to start from ID 1. Okay. So that means all the data has been cleaned and you have to start from the beginning. So the ID is going to start from 1. So similarly, if you want to delete the whole table itself, like including the columns and delete the whole table, the syntax for that is something like this. So it's going to be drop table login. Similar to truncate, you also have another keyword called as drop, which is going to delete the table. So you just have to specify the table name and that is going to do it. But I'm not going to do it right now because we need this table to execute some more queries. But this is the syntax for that. So the next thing that we're going to see is how we can use the alter keyword. So the alter keyword is used when you have to alter or make changes to the table schema. Okay, so let's say you want to change the data type of a particular column, then you can do that using alter or even insert a particular column in between the different columns or after the column or before the column. All of that can be done using alter table. So let's say for example, you want to insert a column called as nickname in between username and password. You can do that and the syntax for that is something like this. So it's going to say alter the table that is the login table and add a column called as nickname and the data type for that column is going to be varchar and you have to insert this after username or you can give it as before as well and that is going to insert it before a particular column. So if you now execute this, as you can see a new column has been inserted between the username and password. Similarly, you can change the data type as well. The syntax for that is similar. So it's saying that alter the table login and here I want to change or modify the column called as password and I want to keep the data type for that or update the data type as varchar. So before we had long text, right? I'm going to change that to varchar. And this is the syntax for modifying the data type of a particular column. So now if you click on go and inside the structure section, as you can see, the password has been changed to varchar. So the last thing that we're going to see is how to use foreign keys. And also I'm going to create another table called as orders so that you'll be able to understand the foreign key concept. So I'm going to do that first and then explain it. Okay, so this is the syntax for that. So we are creating a table called as orders and I have given the order ID and the order value and below that I have created another column called as user ID and given it as int and the last line that I have given it as is called as foreign key and in that I have given the user ID that we had created for this table and this is referencing to the ID that we have inside the login table. So it's like it's establishing a relation or a link between the ID of the login table and the user ID column of the orders table. 
So the reason for using for ranking constraint is because let's say you have two tables that is the login table which contains all the user details and the orders table which contains all the orders uh, that are being ordered currently. Okay. So since we have established a link and and the first column that is the ID of all the users inside the login table is now connected to the last column inside the orders table. So the values in between these two are same. So whenever a particular user orders something, automatically his user ID is being placed inside the user ID column of the orders table. So now all the rows containing the value of one are linked to the person one inside the login table. Okay. So the reason why we establish this connection is because since there is a relation between these two tables, you cannot delete a particular row from the login table if there is a relation to it in the orders table. Because if you delete that row, now all of the rows inside the orders table will break. So there is no connection between these two tables. So that user ID of one is invalid, right? So to avoid this break of code, foreign key constraint makes sure that no row is being deleted which has a link with another table. So those are the main queries that you need to have an idea to do some operations onto the database. As I've said earlier, this is just the basics of SQL. There are many other queries that you need to know, but to create a simple website and to use just the basic operations, these are more than enough. But if you want to do some advanced operations and advanced, you know, queries, you have to know all those other things as well. Like I didn't even include the join and aliases and aggregate functions. All of that comes under a bit of advanced topic. So if you want to learn that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll create a separate video covering the advanced concepts of SQL. But these are the main basic concepts that you need to know to create a simple website using SQL. So that's it for this video guys. If you liked what I've seen till now, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.